Thank you, Wajalin, for joining us today right, and uh, share your story uh, with all of us. You know, I would like to start uh, understanding a little bit more about your company, you know, what problem that you're trying to solve uh, yeah, and yeah. You know, how far are you into the journey? Okay, thank you, AJ, for calling us and take, uh, thank, thank you uh, to DigitalOcean for, for this event and everything. Mm -hmm. Basically, Publitio is cloud-based media asset management platform. Mm -hmm. So we have kind of introduced new layer of cloud storage that uh, makes you know static media assets more dynamic and uh, the main challenge that we had is uh, was creation of full based ap api that allows uh, on the fly transformation and transcoding of videos and images to different formats resizing cropping and stuff like that and uh, on top of that, we have practically built on top of DigitalOcean our own CDN infrastructure. So That's we have awesome. yeah, nice uh, traffic policy in place that is routing visitors to the US, Europe or Asia, depending on the location. And yeah, that was the main uh, scaling challenge also done in place. So. Right, right, right. You know, it's, it's pretty interesting that you say that, like, you know, you know, when we talk about storage, we kind of take things for granted, right? You know, yeah, you just upload your file, video and, you know, yeah. We forget about how we're going to consume that later on, right? Not just as an individual, but as the companies do, right? You know, visit all these different websites and, and all the images and videos, and they all come in different size and pictures. And there's tremendous amount of work that yeah, somebody yeah. has to do on processing that data, right? And to your point, resizing it, you know, make it look better, nicer, so that it, it works on all different kinds of devices, right? Yeah. It's a huge problem today, right? You know, it is, and it is growing, uh, actually. There's a fact that uh, every minute on YouTube is uploaded over uh, three years of video material. And I mean, that, that's like exponentially growing and more and more media is get, getting ingested into the system and the, the end is how to digest that to the end users. And uh, uh, we have been very long into the hosting industry, mm -hmm. almost 20 years in the industry. This is our third company with uh, file storage, you know, uh, services and everything. And we have witnessed how the industry changed over that period, right. you know, from uh, initial servers that were like 80 gigabytes in capacity, right. how we progressed now to the cloud, you know, where you practically have unlimited, but it's not unlimited. In the background, you actually have you know, services and infrastructure like DigitalOcean that does the stuff. Right. And uh, we play our role now. I so see. So we basically, our services like on top of uh, DigitalOcean Paces. Nice, and, nice. And uh, like we said, we make uh, media more dynamic. More dynamic. Way. So yeah, you briefly mentioned like, you know, you work on uh, making media more dynamic, right? And then there are, there are multiple, uh, I would imagine there are multiple aspects to it, right? Once you get the media, there's a part of managing that. Yeah. And then second part is processing that, right? And there are different scenarios that people really want to work with. And, I, and some of the examples that just came to my mind right away, uh, you know, speaking at different conferences and, and having audiences uh, from different culture, not yeah. English not being native language, right? And you can imagine uh, storing a content in a video uh, that is probably the speaker speaking English, but doing automatic translation, right? In yeah. different languages. and. Is that one of some of the directions well, that you're going through? That's one of the directions mm -hmm. to uh, add more, you know, like auto tagging for the images and mm -hmm. video. But uh, the idea is to have end-to-end -end media asset mm -hmm. management solution in one place. I see. You know, so Publitio is ex actually like a Swiss Army knife for media right, file right. hosting, and you get uh, all those microservices under the one platform. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so yeah, you so provide all the services or you work with yeah, the actually, partners and actually marketplace? Actually, we, we have built in place many, many things from CDN to mm -hmm. built-in uh, media player to uh, auto watermarking of uh, images and videos. We have added support for our work with audio documents, with PDF documents, and mm -hmm. we're trying to expand on all the horizons and vertically everything that is possible, you know. So, That's awesome. So as you, as you learn from your customers on different scenarios they want to yeah, solve, you go out yeah. and build that automation for them uh, yeah, to yeah. make life much simple. Uh, for, for example, uh, we have now a great base of users that are using WordPress websites. Mm -hmm. So we have created plugin for offloading of media static content to Publitio. 
So oh, awesome. Yeah, and basically all work from resizing, cropping, and transcoding to playable web formats is done by us on our side. And user doesn't see anything of that. He awesome. just enter AP keys and and then check the box. There's yeah, these other yeah, features that, that I need it, and it's it taken couldn't care be of. simpler. Yeah. Right. And it, it happens at scale, right? Exactly. And you mentioned that you have built a sort of a CDN yes. to back that yes. up. So me as a user, I really don't have to think through, you know, where do I have to store that content that's being generated in which location, whatnot. You take care of that yes. for me automatically. Yes, we, we do that. Uh, we, we have a traffic manager in place mm -hmm. that is uh, routing users to the US, Europe, or Asia da data center. Right, right. You know, and each data center has their own layers of load balancers and API and media servers working together with uh, database master and replications in, in since. So it's working very nice. That's awesome. So and I'm assuming this is the part of a the front end usage, like when I'm actually uploading the content, I'm not thinking about which data center that it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, it's done by us automatically. Right, and then, and then there's another aspect of consuming that content, right? Yes. Uh, from your web application or exactly. whatever. How, how do you guys play a role in that aspect? It's uh, connected. So mm -hmm. when users from Asia mm -hmm. visit some content from the US, right. we actually make a hard copy on data center in Asia, and it, I see. it is delivered very fast from, you know, And then you take geology. care of the replication. Yeah, and yeah, all the it's, it's there, done right? on, on the background. So it's, it's a one shop solution, right? You know, yeah. you, once you get your data, you know, the whole journey of how the static data, exactly. starting from manipulation of the data to storing and replicating and serving to the, your customers and user yes. uh, becomes really, really simple, right? Yes. That's, that's fantastic, you know? Tell me, tell me about how did you get started on this journey? Well, Why this problem, right? Well, uh, we were solving our own uh, problems. Mm -hmm. You know, the, our, our previous company, we worked with uh, a lot of images, a lot of videos in media, and we kind of needed something that could handle all this media on, on a bigger scale. Mm -hmm. You know, so little by little, we have started investigating and creating API for, for that functionality. I see. And uh, the MVP was out, you know, mm -hmm. we had initial uh, traction, users and everything. And uh, we had uh, success with AppSumo. Mm -hmm. They did like uh, life, lifetime account sales mm -hmm. and everything. So we have gathered the use of 5,000 customers at this point. Right. Right. And it's, Nice momentum. We have attracted the, the VC funding around 300k. In, Congratulations! In, in, yeah. yeah, thank you. In first two years, and uh, we are on a nice momentum and growth. You know, we're planning on US tour in uh, February next year, uh -huh. so we will see. That's always exciting to hear the success stories, right? You know, you know, yeah. and I'm. You know, I'm, I'm assuming Hatch was a big part of that, right? Yes, this exactly. With Dio. Like, can, yeah. you, can you talk about that, you know, that journey, how, how it helped you to go from Yeah, that? yeah. Well, uh, the hosting infrastructure offered by DigitalOcean was a win-win solution for us. Right. Uh, we were chasing our investors to get listed as a Hatch partner program, uh, partners on mm -hmm. the list. And almost after a year, they finally managed to secure, you know, 10K in, in Hatch credits. Mm -hmm. And that's like a burden off for, for the startups, you yes, know. Yes, yes. And uh, it allow us to play, to set up the infrastructure without worrying too much uh, at the cost. And on the long term, DigitalOcean uh, offers lowest prices in the, in the industry. So yes. our customers usually compare us with the Amazon and Microsoft, but we're cheaper than them, but we're not still cheaper than the digital ocean because, right, you right. know, the pricing for the bandwidth and storage is very, very industry. Right, right. That's, that's what we strive to, to go yeah, after, right? Yeah, Keeping yeah. it simple and, and affordable yeah. in a way, right? So we, we can all together build some meaningful businesses, right? So exactly. that's a great story to hear, right? Yeah. You know. You, know, you talked about a little bit about funding, so I'm assuming you know you're growing as a team as well. Yeah. Like, can you talk yeah. about how big is the team? Some of the things or decisions that you made in hiring, like you know, what's your thought process around mm -hmm. onboarding people? What kind of individuals that you look after and whatnot? Well, uh, we're right now a team of five, mm -hmm. uh, and excellence. We have a couple of more people working part time with us, mm -hmm. and uh, the one of the investors is like outsourcing company in in the serbia mm -hmm. so they have helped us we have their whole outsourcing team on our side you know they have like 200 employees if we oh, need wow. anything you know the wordpress plugin that we mentioned they did that for us nice. and, uh, 
uh, what we're now looking is uh, uh, key players. I mean, people who have uh, who were able to execute something similar in the in the past, and we're looking for them to become the core team. You know, we have ESOP on the side, mm -hmm. uh, shares for for the employees and everything, and. We're looking to attract, you know, top talent to come to work with us. Yeah, that's always a challenge in a way, right? Yeah, you know? it is. It yeah. is. I mean. And so how's that agency model working out for you? Like, you know, because that's interesting and I'm pretty sure there are uh, people well, who are trying to solve I'm this a, problem. I'm a, I'm a developer, mm -hmm. uh, IT engineer in the first place, but uh, uh, it's different when you give s to somebody else to right. do, do right. your stuff. You know, it's never going to be the same quality right. and user experience because they're limited like in human hours that they can right. put into it. But uh, uh, from experience, you know, maybe uh, one amount of energy goes for, to develop something, but much more uh, energy is needed to perfect that, right. you know, to remove the frictions right. between each step of, of the application, you know, to kind of make the best user experience in the end. You right, know? right. You know, yeah. you know, you have a picture in your mind, this is how this thing should look like, yeah. right? And then essentially translating that to someone else's head yeah, exactly. is always difficult, right? Always because difficult. the end product <laughs> might not yeah, be. Yeah. So those are some of the challenges. Yeah, right? but, but th that's the entrepreneurship. I mean, yes. yeah, that's why we're in it. That's why the startups are here and, yep. you know, they always say the companies around the individuals. So right, right, right. I guess, right. you know. Finding the few uh, key players could actually make the the good business. So. Right, right. That's interesting. So now, you know, let, let's talk a little bit more about like you know the future of this business, right? Because it's such an exciting space, right? Yeah. And it's just not about storing static content. You know, to when you start talking about you know some of the things that you mentioned that there's a workflow that I allow you to transcode and change the image size and yeah. whatnot. The next thing that comes to my mind, you know, how can these things be wired? Like you know when. You know, the industry is going as a, you know, in a compute perspective as a serverless, right? So this whole notion around, you know, when the data came to this uh, CDN or storage, right? How can I trigger that action? How can I automate that workflow? Like, you know, yeah. how you guys are thinking about, you know, building that sort of a, to put it, Lego block in your application pipeline versus somebody manually uploading the data today? Well, uh, the end is, uh in the automation, right. how to automate all, all the whole process, everything that can be included in, in this workload. I see, so, I see. Because you know, as, as a company, when you're working, and one, one example I'll give you as a, a digital agency, right? There's tons and tons of uh, data that will come in, right? And you know, yes, there's ways to tag and whatnot, but data can be coming in from different devices, different places at different times, right? Yeah. And the ultimate output is to, how do you invoke those workflow, right? So this whole idea behind listening on those notifications, yes. I got this data, let's kick off this workflow and then send the data somewhere else. Like, you know, you know what I'm saying, yeah, right? You yeah. know, where, where do you see that industry? Uh, heading? Yeah, headed towards that, yeah. Well, uh, serverless, like you, yeah. like you mentioned, that is uh, definitely, it's like uh, each new service that comes and the company is adding new level of simplicity right. to, the, to the game. For example, when DigitalOcean showed up on the market, it was just another web hosting company. Right. Nobody cared. Right. But DigitalOcean introduced that, that level of simplicity that you can spin off server in like 60 seconds. You don't need to be the tech guy. You don't, you don't need DevOps and engineers. You can do that right. on your own. So uh, the next thing needs to be like 10x time better. better. You know, with uh, UX, with the simplicity and everything. And, those who, who are able to achieve that, they, they will succeed. That's awesome. You know, That's they, good to they, hear. So more abstraction layer, make lives even much more simpler, yeah, right? Yeah. Do you see the opportunity around the static content and processing that? That's fantastic, right? There is also this wave uh, of innovations that are coming in where people are streaming mm -hmm. live videos, right? You know, everybody has a mobile phone, you know, there's events happening, whatnot. Those streams are going in some different place and maybe they're gonna be stored at some sort of a CD and whatnot, right? Uh, how big is that opportunity for you to tap into, right? You know, if the data feed starts coming in and then now doing those transformation and all the learnings that you had on a static images, now doing that on a live streams, 
Is that something you're thinking about or is it completely off the track right no, now? No, it, it is uh, our, our competition mm -hmm. that we track. They do already something similar with the live streaming and mm -hmm. it's endless. But uh, uh, right now it's about securing the, the core of, of uh, the platform. It's storage, right. it's uh, processing, it's delivery. You know, so make this work, optimize it, make it fast as possible and then you can build around it. I see, I see. Uh, so I there is so much to be addressed in the yes, core in yes, itself right yes, now, right? Yeah, you know, we, a, we're still scratching the surface in a way, exactly. right? There's a lot of companies, you know, specified for different niches, different needs and everything. You can't be them all. But the idea is if you put something out, you know, try to make it better than, than previous solutions. Yeah. Right, right. Can you talk about some of the challenges, tech, uh, technology perspective, right? running this thing there at a scale. I'm assuming that yeah, you're dealing yeah. with tons and tons of data. What, what is the size of data? Well, uh, we're talking about the terabytes at this moment. Oh, we're wow. not at the yeah. petabyte level, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, main, the main thing was uh, building like uh, CDN infrastructure, you know, that works syn synchronized. You know, uh, we have built our own uh, database with master and slave replications. Mm -hmm and how all this got tied to work together with, you know, very low latency, with no lagging and everything. Uh, also, video conversion is a big issue, pain in the ass for, right. for many people. Right. And uh, how we solve this for our clients and how we are still solving it, you know, you can't have 100% perfect video conversion. Right, right. There are always going to be some failures with videos, right. with different, different codecs and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But uh, you get the code that is uh, functioning and working. So right, right. Th this was the challenge. Yeah, and that, that's great to know. Like you, know, you, like you said, you know, this is your probably, th it's, it's your third startup, right? Yeah. So there are some learnings that you took over from the last uh, yeah, couple, exactly. right? And you know, in one of the things that I'm very curious about to know, especially that you have done that couple of times like what is your process around uh, building things fast you know what I mean by that instead of trying to do everything right uh, versus you know doing fast right and taking on more technical debt to at some point I'll fix it and later on but you know what's what's the thought process you know is there anything that you can share with the rest of the community well uh, I can speak as a, as a human mm -hmm. Well, it's very important to have, you know, activity period, but also like uh, passive periods mm -hmm. where, where you can rest and, uh, you know, get ready, get sharp for, for the next adventure. Right. Uh, usually development comes in periods. Right. So you need to be sharp for that period when you're going to push yourself, you know, to the limit. I see. You know, to have the sharp edge and everything. So uh, that makes it, you know. It's important to have a good team, you know, people that can understand you right. next to you, you know, so you can brainstorm with them and, uh, you know, come to those uh, good things, funny things. And, and you should try them. Like they say, right. uh, if you need to fail, fail fast. Yes. And, you know, and uh, you're not going to know if something is working in or not if you don't try it. Right. So. So yeah, don't, don't be a stickler, try and get something out as soon as possible, yeah. learn, yeah. iterate, yeah. right? Yeah. And not just from a product perspective, but as well as from technology perspective, right? Yeah. You know, it's okay to not go after fixing everything at once, uh, you know, and, and pile on to some of the tech that yeah. for future to address, uh, as long as you're building a momentum, yeah. as long as you're, yeah. you're building yeah. a business, right? So on to this journey of, again, three startups, right? What, what has been the most satisfying moment for you as an individual and as working with your team? Well, the most satisfying thing was actually the beginning of everything. <laughs> I, I guess the playing is the thing. Right. You know, we all want to hit that Super League, you know, right, the, right. The, the high game and everything. But uh, uh, in the end, that moment when, when you swung, yeah. that was the moment. I mean, you started, you put something in the motion and right. we will see how it's going to fall up to the end. So Right, so the, that first MVP that you build is always the most satisfying thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it is. Okay. I, I mean, we were younger, we, had, we were more passionate mm -hmm. and everything. Now is more everything business, but uh, I just can't lose that feeling of the passion yeah. 
that puts you, yeah, you know, yeah. forward. That's the that's the thing. You know? Yeah, you have to have that fire burning yeah, in a have, way, right? Have, yeah, right. So yeah. that's that's really interesting uh, to hear, right? And I'm pretty sure you know people who are listening to this will resonate with that too, right? Is is this whole notion of creating something new, right? And then bringing it out yeah. to for everybody else to test. And as long as you have that passion, uh, that innovation will stay with you, right? Yeah. And every next iteration that you make for a product or for feature, right? It takes you back yeah. to that thinking, you know? And, and, and that, that incremental satisfaction allows you to build a bigger yeah. uh, company and uh, solve that problem mm. in a dramatic way. Playing is the thing. Yes. If you can play, you can win. Yes, you have to play. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you have. <laughs> How do you find your motivation besides, you know, shipping good stuff on MVP outside of the work? Well, uh, I have pretty good balance mm -hmm. with uh, private life. Okay. Uh, I'm deeply involved with uh, Japanese martial arts. Oh, nice. So, yeah. So that's kind of gave me, you know, balance and strength and everything that, that I need to push forward. Right. Yeah. Tell, tell me more about that. Like, how's, how is that helping you out? Right. And uh, first of all, this is a great point that I want all of us to learn from. Like, you know, yeah. the balancing act is super critical. Right. It's yeah. sometimes we get lost into build something. Right. And taking a break. Yeah. Walking away from the jeep building and, you know, having that fresh thinking again and start over yeah. is critical. But tell me more about this. Right. Well, uh, the, the main thing is the morning. Mm -hmm. Early morning routine, you know, to get up early as you can, mm -hmm. 5, 6 a.m. Right. You know, to have some time for yourself, you know, the body requires attention, your mind requires mm -hmm. attention, you know. Do do the stuff you love, you know, read something, write calligraphy, take right. a dog for a walk, I don't know, eat some good food. Right. And uh, I'm not rushing with the work anymore, you know, I'm just Interesting. waiting for that, you know, creative moment to come. Mm -hmm. that I really feel, hey, I, I, I could do this, I need to do this today, you know. Right, right. And uh, in the end, it's about repetition. Doing that over and over and over again, you know. I mean, it's uh, simple, but not easy. Right, right. You know, and that's the hardest thing to do, probably. Yeah. You know, set yeah. into routine, right? That, yeah. But yeah. that, you know, what I'm hearing is that it brings a great level of discipline within you as an individual that you can yeah. carry back into your work, yes. into what you're trying to build, and that will show in your work yes. in a way, right? Yes. Because that, that is the most important part because when people are way too focused on trying to build things without being disciplined, right? Yeah. There's a very good chance that you will be going all over different places, right? The focus Yeah, loses. and, and uh, the startup ecosystem doesn't talk about that too much, but many, many people burn out. Right. And I mean, we're uh, talking about the 0.1 successes Right. You know, uh, key individuals, everybody want to be the unicorn, but uh, uh, under the layer of 99.99% of the people that are involved in that, they, their voice is not heard, you know. Right. A lot of them burn out on that way to the success and everything. So I think that's a fantastic tip for, for all of us, not just doing a startup perspective, right? Mm -hmm. you know, how do you balance that out? So, you know, that, that, is, that is super amazing. You know, you talked about some of the discipline that you brought in your life, right? And, and then how it's helping you uh, drive some of the innovations uh, that you're trying to solve. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's motivation that you're getting from somewhere, right? There are people that are inspiring you yeah. every single day, right? And, yeah. you know, can you talk about some of those Well, uh, there's, a, there's a guy uh, called Dennis Fong, mm -hmm. aka Trash. Mm -hmm. He's uh, one of the best quick players uh, the gaming. Mm -hmm. uh, best player of the world and uh, his story mm -hmm. he was like a champion of Quake 1, Quake 2 back in 96, 99 mm -hmm. and everything and uh, in 2000 he started uh, Gamers.com for $60 with his brother uh -huh. and uh, in a couple of years they have sold that for like 6 million uh -huh. Wow! yeah and uh, he started work on a new startup called mm -hmm. uh, x5.com he sold that later to mm -hmm. Viacom for like 100 million dollars oh, wow. or something and uh, he now has the new venture called Raptor.com mm -hmm. it's some like social gaming platform and, uh, it's amazing. Right, right. It's amazing to see, you know, that, that passion. He, he's right. doing what he loves. Exactly. You know, and he's succeeding. Right, right. Over and over again. And, uh, you know, it's not like the big game, you know, CEO and stuff and everything. But uh, it's amazing, you know, how right. you can actually make. Right. And these are the stories that are not often talked about, right? You know, yeah. you always hear about the big, big star stories yeah. and you know how 
multiple things have happened and whatnot, but these sort of serial entrepreneurship, right, is yeah. critical and it, it, it helps lift the game up at the grassroots, right, for all of us. Like, so, you know, thank you for sharing that, right? Awesome. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.